you have an opportunity. It's such a, it's such a mysterious platform. Part of the job is the constitutional aspect. And you, you see that demonstrated when you give the speech from the throne mm -hmm. and when you swear in cabinet and uh, when you sign documents and give royal assent. But that is such a small part of the opportunity. The big part of the opportunity is what? Is dealing with citizens mm -hmm. of this province, of hearing their stories, of bringing them together in in very informal ways, but just uh, just getting to know who are these people? Why do they live where they do? Why, uh, what are their aspirations for their communities? And what, what are the barriers they face? Well, let me pick up on that because I'm sure you did not plan to have this job during a once in a century global pandemic in which obviously everything about how you did your job changed. Did you ever during the course of that think to yourself, hmm, maybe this wasn't such a great idea to have this job after all? Absolutely not. Why not? Because I loved every day. There was never a day when I wasn't ready to get out of bed and go into work. And it was, uh, it was just the inspiration that comes. It, it was curiosity. I learned absolutely every day. And there wasn't a week that went by that I didn't think of something mischievous to be able to do, to be, to be able to convene people, to be able to uh, to hear their stories. Now that's interesting because we don't think of the Lieutenant Governor as part of the job description being mischievous. So what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, mischievous in the sense of, uh, of bringing people together who don't normally have a chance to be together, introducing them to one another, talking about issues that are well beyond an electoral uh, cycle, um, but just learning from each other and, and seeing the, the interest in their faces when they would be introduced to somebody whose work they'd never heard of, uh, um, somebody like a, uh, like a Dr. Joe McGuinness, for example, uh, an underwater doctor, um, adventurer, um, or, or even just the man down the street or the little girl down the street who's doing amazing things in her own neighborhood. Well, one of the things I learned from you is that it's not just the Lieutenant Governor's job uh, to advise her First Minister and take advice, from, I guess, you know, have those regular conversations as part of your job, but it is also your job to warn your First Minister. What did you warn a Premier about, for example? Well, I would not... Uh... I would not release the confidences of those uh, conversations. Now, that's such a shame, because I... Well, it, it may be, uh, except that it's a respect for the position. Uh, if, if people started talking about what those conversations were all about, then the very essence of the role of being nonpartisan, apolitical, uh, and, uh, and, and having the respect, it's a very unique and special relationship between the First Minister and the Lieutenant Governor. You know what you and I have in common? Is that I like to be mischievous in my job too. <laughs> so get ready, Your Honor, here we go. You had two different premiers during your term, Kathleen Wynne and Doug Ford. Who'd you like dealing with more? I always like dealing with uh, the, uh, the uh, First Minister of the day because I could, I could try and understand what was going on uh, but it was more that you got to know them as human beings as well.